CBS News, I'm Dick Reeves. So there was a bright flash, and we could see flame going off in three directions, and then nothing. A horrified eyewitness to the space tragedy at Cape Canaveral, the shuttle Challenger exploding in the skies over the Atlantic, about a minute after liftoff, apparently killing all seven people on board, including New Hampshire high school teacher Krista McCullough. Christopher Glenn is at the Cape. He was a witness to the disaster. Chris, do we know much more now than we did when the spacecraft blew up? No, we don't, Dick. Uh, at this point, uh, it's still rather inconclusive as to as to exactly what happened. Um, one of the NASA spokesmen speculated to us uh, a little while ago that it appeared as if... Uh, one of the solid rocket boosters, there are two of them on every um, rocket configuration for the shuttle that goes up. It appeared that one of them had separated from the rocket assembly prematurely and gone its own separate way. And uh, that, of course, caused the rest of the, uh, the spacecraft and the rockets to uh, run amok in the sky and uh, eventually for that assembly to fall into the ocean. It's not known at this time whether, by some miracle, the uh, shuttle Challenger, the orbiter itself, was intact after the explosion and was somehow able to separate from the main fuel tank and the other solid rocket booster and somehow perform an aerodynamic glide down in and ditch at sea. Uh, we're looking at pictures from NASA cameras over the crash site uh, in the Atlantic right now and all they show there is a few yellowish streaks in the water. It appears to be some kind of uh, chemical uh, uh, debris from the uh, from the uh, crash it, itself, perhaps uh, spent fuel or something like that, but uh, no sign of any large chunks of wreckage and certainly no sign of the orbiter. Well, were there uh, efforts, obviously, to get the rescue people there, but it took some time, did it not? Yes, uh, they, they had some people uh, nearby, but um, from the altitude at which the spacecraft was traveling uh, when the explosion occurred, it would take the debris, all of it, uh, some 15 minutes to fall into the sea. That was how, how high up in the air they were. So they were prevented from entering the actual crash site until uh, perhaps 15 or 20 minutes after the explosion and after they had scrambled to get underway to get out there. They just had to hang back and wait to go in until everything had finished falling from above them, which possibly could have hit them and compounded this tragedy. And of course it seems so long, so agonizingly long since it happened, uh, that those of us who are waiting and hoping uh, wonder what's going to happen now, what will happen now. Now uh, NASA has impounded all of the telemetry, all of the data, and all of the voice tapes from the flight, and they will be analyzing them very carefully over the next days, over the next weeks, over the next months, and it may be a very long time indeed before we get any uh, official version of what happened here today. What was immediately apparent, as you said, was what we could see with our eyes, this rocket uh, which appeared to be going so well without warning even to the eye or to instruments of any kind, just blew apart in the air. Does NASA plan any kind of an announcement, or is that sort of a constant process at this time? At this point, we're getting intermittent reports from Mission Control, uh, Dick, but um, they're not really adding too terribly much new information each time. Uh, there's no broad revelation uh, uh, at all uh, other than what we already know. Chris Glenn reporting from the Cape. Gene Craven was watching the launch from the third floor roof of the University of Florida, 150 miles away. I knew that something was seriously wrong, having seen several liftoffs before, because on a clear day we would have been able to watch the, the flame of the booster for much longer. So we just saw the explosion and then flame going in three directions and then nothing but uh, the smoke from the exhaust. In Washington, President Reagan was quickly told of the terrible event, Gary Schuster reports from the White House. White House spokesman Larry Speaks said President Reagan was informed of the accident at a meeting with aides in the Oval Office. He immediately went to his adjoining study and watched television reruns of the liftoff and the explosion. The president was stood there in almost stunned silence as he watched the television. Uh, you, could, uh, you could certainly read uh, the concern, uh, the sorrow, uh, the anxiety, uh, on his face as he watched. Speaks said he didn't believe the accident would deter the American space exploration program. The presidential spokesman also said he didn't expect the accident to affect Mr. Reagan's State of the Union address tonight, except that the president would certainly make reference to the accident. Gary Schuster, CBS News, the White House.
a friend of Krista McAuliffe, New Hampshire school, high school principal Chris Rath said, amid all the excitement and preparation for the mission, no one gave much thought to the potential dangers. There's been a, a great deal of activity focused on the shuttle. We built an ice cream shuttle and the kids built an ice sculpture shuttle and we've really, we know the ins and outs of a shuttle and throughout all of that, no one thought about that, I don't think, in terms of it is a dangerous expedition. It's still a frontier and we haven't mastered it and we saw that today. Recapping the story, the space shuttle Challenger exploded about one minute after liftoff from Cape Canaveral and plunged into the Atlantic Ocean some 60 miles from the launch pad. The fate of the seven-member crew, including teacher Krista McAuliffe, is unknown. But it's unlikely that any of those on board the shuttle Challenger could have survived. I'm Dick Reeves, CBS News. Now, direct from CBS News, this Radio Net Alert Bulletin. This is Mitchell Krauss in New York. Stunned disbelief, tragedy, disaster. Cape Canaveral, the flight of the Space Shuttle Challenger. Moments after liftoff today, as you may have heard, it exploded in a giant fireball, apparently killing all the seven crew members aboard. Although there is no definite word on the fate of the crew, rescuers are at the scene. It was difficult to reach the scene, for debris fell for some 45 minutes after the explosion in space. Christopher Glenn is at the Cape. We'll be talking with him in moments on the status of the rescue effort now underway. Of course, the President and all members of the Congress and the Space Agency, the United States government, and I'm sure the people of the United States were shocked and saddened by this disaster at the Cape. The first time in flight in 56 United States manned space missions that there was a disaster and there was death. And ironically, just the other day was the 19th anniversary of the disaster on the ground that killed several astronauts. But that was the first time we had a disaster and never in the air had a space shuttle encountered this difficulty. Krista McAuliffe was, of course, aboard that flight, the first citizen in space, the first teacher in space, and she was thrilled when she accepted her choice as the first private citizen to fly on the shuttle. This it's, from her White House speech. It's not often that a teach visit a loss for words. I know my students wouldn't think so. I've made nine wonderful friends over the last two weeks. And when that shuttle goes, there might be one body. <laughs> But there's going to be ten souls that I'm taking with me. Thank you. That's great. The parents of the New Hampshire teacher, of course, were on the scene at the Cape when the disaster occurred. They stared in utter disbelief as they watched the shuttle explode. There was cheering before the explosion. There was happiness. And then, oh, my God, oh, no, said one. And with looks of shock, the Corrigans, Edward and Grace Corrigan of Framingham, Massachusetts, the parents of Krista McAuliffe, were taken to another room by NASA officials. Christopher Glenn is at the Cape, and uh, Chris, uh, what's the latest that you have? In the last few minutes, uh, Mitchell, uh, very little from NASA itself. They uh, have put a few additional details on the story, but uh, uh, nothing major other than what, what, what is already speculated, which is that perhaps one of the two solid rocket boosters that help propel the uh, spacecraft toward its orbit and then are, are designed to fall away at a certain point in the launch sequence, um, separated from the uh, main rocket assembly prematurely and therefore caused the uh, rest of it to, to go haywire. And of course, it's uncontrollable with that mighty thrust coming out of all those rocket engines and uh, it was very quickly over. Uh, still unknown is whether uh, the orbiter itself somehow uh, survived the explosion and somehow it would have to have been a miracle managed to uh, make a, uh, an aerodynamic glide back into the ocean and ditch there as as planes can do they can ditch in the ocean but this was from a tremendous height and it happened all at once without any advance warning and uh, it's not even clear whether um, the uh, ground teams or the computers on the ground were able to get the rest of the rockets separated from the orbiter itself so that it would be possible for Commander uh, uh, Francis Scobie to have, to have made a maneuver like that and try to ditch at sea. At any rate, the, um, the rescue teams that are out in the impact area now, about 60 miles offshore, uh, we're seeing some NASA uh, cameras showing us pictures of the surface of the water showing no visible chunks of, uh, of debris, but showing some 
chemical smears on the surface of the water, and uh, that's about all we know right at the moment. I do have with me once again Mitchell, uh, James Rivers of um, WKXL in Concord, New Hampshire, and Jim, of course, has been on the phone uh, up there with them constantly since this tragedy occurred. And, uh, Jim, what can you add to the story from Concord now? Well, actually, um, Chris, there, there are two points coming out of the city of Concord right now. Uh, high school principal Charles Foley closed off Concord High School to the media moments after it had happened. And his faculty and staff are meeting to offer the counseling to the student body or to any members of the faculty that feel that they need counseling to help them get through this day. Our reporters from uh, CBS affiliate WKXL and Concord on the street are finding that the people of Concord really don't want to talk about it. The, the, the mood on Main Street and in the stores where very little activity is going on right now, people are walking around with their, their heads bowed and really, as you might understand, not wanting to uh, talk to reporters and just sitting back and waiting. I, uh, you told us earlier, didn't you, that um, the, this was a day of great celebration at Concord High School, that the student body and the faculty had gathered in the auditorium in front of a large screen TV and were uh, celebrating the, the apparently successful launch in its first minute. Um, what happened when, uh, when they realized that something was going wrong up there? Dead silence uh, in talking with the members of the faculty at Concord uh, High School, uh, Harvey Smith, whose classroom is wired by NASA and was going to originate the question and answer series with Krista McCall uh, on Friday now, uh, was in the auditorium and I have spoken with him and he said it was just all of a sudden as if you turned the, the volume switch on something off. It was silence altogether all at once. And then Mr. Foley uh, addressed the student body and uh, they filed out very quietly leaving behind all of their paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. Uh, Krista McAuliffe, of course, had planned to teach uh, two brief uh, lessons from space to a nationwide um, radio and television hookup to schools around the country, uh, which was to have been um, provided by the Public Broadcasting Service. The first of those was to have been uh, a sort of the grand tour of the, uh, the space shuttle. The ultimate field trip was, I think, what she had entitled her lesson plan. And the second was uh, where we are, where we're going, why we're in space, that kind of thing. And, she had said um, long before the flight that what she really wanted to do, the real reason that she wanted to go into space was to demystify NASA and space flight. Uh, she wanted to show ordinary people and generations of young Americans that there was a place for them in space and a reason that they should be going there. And I think her, her words are ironic and uh, especially tragic today. Uh, uh, given the scope of this disaster, which we have seen before. Um, again, uh, Jim, uh, you, you mentioned, and I wonder if you could tell us uh, once more about the uh, plans for uh, special counseling for the kids at Concord High, uh, if any of them have uh, psychological difficulty with, uh, with the tragedy. Well, Chris, this had, uh, as I indicated earlier, there had been a tragedy at the high school earlier with a young student who had been involved in a, a shooting that many of the students witnessed and it required counseling, and uh, Charles Foley, the principal at Concord High, had gotten together his staff, and many students did uh, go to the counseling. Now, on a much grander scale, with uh, most all of the student body in the auditorium viewing this, I guess there is going to be a need for some counseling. It will be offered uh, through the school. The school has been uh, dismissed as of 1 o'clock this afternoon for the student body to go home and, and be with their loved ones and be with their families, but once uh, the school bells ring again uh, in Concord, there are going to be uh, some students who will want to just talk it out. And the question again is, is why this all happened. Even Kristen herself said, I want to prove that it's a safe place to be, that it's just as, as safe as walking across the street. Let me interrupt you, uh, Chris, for a moment, and Jim Rivers. Uh, we have uh, Jake Garn, the senator from Utah, who flew in space and uh, was aboard one of the shuttles, and we'll go now to Washington for that. Well, it's very difficult for me to talk about it because these were my friends. Mike Smith, the uh, pilot, was my mother hen the first month that I trained. They assigned him to me, go to my classes and help uh, brief me. And I don't know of any time that I have been more shocked or more moved than when my first wife was killed in an automobile accident. And so it's been uh, very, very difficult for me this morning. What does this do to the space program here and its support on the Hill, Senator? Well, I have great confidence in the space program. I think it's a 
remarkable system, and I think we should push ahead after we have determined the cause. Obviously, we should not fly until we have determined the cause of this particular failure, but I think we need to look at all of the successes, the remarkable safety record that the space program has had, the benefits that uh, come from it, and the crew members that I knew so well, I would expect that they would want us to go ahead with the space program after we have gone through the proper investigations and analysis and know what happened. How should we go about investigating this? Well, obviously, you have to gather all of the data. It has been impounded at this point. There have to be a lot of studies, but there are some superbly qualified experts in this area that I think will be able to determine the, what the failure was. Senator, you were on board the space shuttle. You felt that tremendous boost that you got. Now, from the telemetry that we heard, the voice data that we heard, they had just told the pilot to go to full throttle, and he had said he was throttling up. What happens at that moment? You have a combination of the solid rocket booster power and liquid hydrogen and oxygen in the main tank. And because most of your thrust comes from the solid rocket boosters, while you're still in the atmosphere, you can exceed the maximum dynamic pressure. So the main engines are only at about 60% of power until you get further out of the atmosphere. And they had just been given the command to throttle up. And then you go to 104% or maximum power on the solids or on the liquids. And so that is exactly what had taken place. They were high enough so they would not endanger the orbiter from too much pressure and were given that order that they could proceed to uh, what, increase the power. What are some of the things that can go wrong at that moment? Well, you have a very large external tank of very volatile liquid hydrogen and oxygen. And uh, you're just simply, it's like in uh, an automobile, you are putting more fuel. You're pushing down on the accelerator. You're putting more fuel to bring more uh, power. And of course, at this point, we don't know whether it was one of the solids. We don't know whether it was the liquid engines or not. There's just uh, no way to know at this point. Yes, I think so. The major problem uh, these last couple of missions has been uh, weather, and that is something that NASA cannot control. But uh, yes, I think the program was mature enough that, and with the opening of the second pad, pad B, which Challenger was launched from this morning with two pads I, and also the addition of the fourth orbiter. Yes, I think they were capable of that schedule. Do you think it's going to make any difference to civilians in space from now on? Well, I can't judge what decisions NASA will make, but uh, my own opinion, again, after the investigations, we should proceed with the program, and that would include uh, the civilians in space program as well. As a civilian yourself going in, will you adequately warned that something like this could happen? Oh, of course. The, the training is very thorough and uh, very adequate. In my own case, having flown more than 10,000 hours, I was certainly aware that there are dangers in uh, flying. However, I still feel very strongly that uh, I'm much safer in flying an aircraft than any day that I'm on the uh, Capital Beltway, and I don't mean that to be facetious at all. We kill nearly 50,000 people a year on the automobile in the highways of this country because of half of them because of drunk driving. I wish we'd pay a lot more attention uh, to that. So, so should there have been some way for them, or was there any way for them to get out at this point? Should there have been? No, I don't think so. In uh, Columbia, originally during the test phase, when just uh, they were sending two test pilots up, they did have an escape uh, capsule. The program had re uh, been proved safe enough, in my opinion, that they didn't need them in the other orbiters, and Columbia had been modified so that it did not have the escape mechanism in it. Uh, this is purely my opinion, but in watching what happened this morning, I would doubt very much, even if you had had an escape capsule on board or parachutes, that it would have been possible to get out with that kind of an explosion uh, in any event. Senator, in light of all the delays surrounding recent shuttles and this one, do you think that NASA may have been too anxious to get this one off the ground? No. No, I was down on Saturday and for the launch on Sunday morning. 
and they were criticized on Sunday for being overly careful. Safety has always been uh, foremost in their minds. And we woke up on Sunday morning after having canceled at 10 o'clock the night before to a perfect morning. <clears throat> it was beautiful, sunny, clear blue skies, perfect launch, and there was a lot of talk that rather irritated me while well, NASA was overly cautious. And so, no, I don't think that's true at all. What happens in your subcommittee now in terms of funding for the program? Well, I can't answer that question exactly because of Graham Rudman and the other budget constraints, but I certainly have no intentions other than to push on and uh, that does not change the uh, intent or the progress of the program. How, how do you think the investigation ought to be handled? So there, should there be some sort of blue ribbon panel put together or should NASA be uh, uh, allowed to handle it? Well, I think NASA has the technical experts, and if they need more than in-house, they will uh, pull them in. I don't think we need to uh, to go outside that other than to draw on consultants if, if necessary. NASA is so thorough and so careful. If any of you had experienced how they go through the redundancy and the backups and careful nature, the dedication of these scientists and engineers in NASA, I have full faith in them. They want the program to succeed. They want to take care of their uh, astronauts. It's always a real team effort. They work closely uh, together, and they will want to find out what happened more than anybody else. Senator, how lucky do you feel today that you returned safely? Well, I don't uh, feel particularly lucky. I, I think the program is, is reliable in all uh, programs, in flight test programs for aircraft. We have, uh, we have accidents. And I, I don't, uh, it's a surprise to me that it happened, but I, I would go again tomorrow. If, if NASA would let me go, I would go again. What effect is this likely to have on the community of astronauts? Well, first of all, they're all such a close-knit group. They're not looking any beyond today except the sorrow of losing some of their... Uh, their companions. You go through each one. I knew Kristen McAuliffe uh, the least of them because she wasn't there. Greg Jarvis I trained with. Dick Scobie I knew. Mike Smith was my mother hen and you go on a Zuka flu uh, in January last year when I was flying so it's uh, and where they live together all the time, they train together, they fly together, there's obviously utter shock and disbelief down at Houston today among the astronaut corps. Live coverage of the aftermath of the tragedy at Cape Canaveral, the destruction in flight, the explosion that destroyed the Challenger and probably destroyed the crew of seven as well. We're bringing you live continuing coverage on the CBS radio network. Now we're going to the White House and Gary Schuster. Thank yes, uh, the president has just spoken with some reporters here in the Roosevelt Room. He came in to uh, drop by a lunch. Uh, it was being attended by network correspondents uh, in preparation, getting some uh, background information on the President's State of the Union address tonight. The President was asked several questions, and uh, I'll give you just some of the responses he, he had. Uh, he said, I don't think any of the astronauts who were in that program were anything other than volunteers. They volunteered for the program. They were aware of the risks. But he also pointed out, of course, that the program has had a 100% uh, safety record up until now. He was also asked if, uh, if there might not be some public backlash because of this accident against the program, and he said, I don't think so. He said, I will do all I can to counter any such development. And uh, he also said that uh, before any other challengers or any other space programs uh, get off the ground, that there will have to be a complete investigation of this and a resolution as to what happened before any of the others go up. He said he still has confidence in the program and those who administer it, and that is uh, NASA, which is a civilian uh, operation. The president also was asked about Kristen McAuliffe, so the teacher who was on board, who the president greeted here in the Rose Garden uh, several months ago as uh, the teacher who was selected to go up in space. And he said, I can't get out of my mind her husband, her children, and as well as the others who are on board, he said, but especially Kristen McAuliffe. He was asked what reaction uh, he had to children because of Mrs. McAuliffe's uh, presence on this flight and the fact that she was supposed to do some teaching in outer space and, and programs had been done where children were doing uh, a number of projects related to this, the president was asked, what, what do you tell the children who see this, who will hear about it? And he said, I guess what you have to tell them is that life must go on. He was also told that, uh, of 
course, that his speech tonight, the State of the Union Address, is supposed to be upbeat, was supposed to be an uplifting speech, a vision for the nation for 1986, and doesn't this accident uh, cast a pall on it? And he said, I'm sure it does, but he said, you can't stop governing a nation because of a tragedy. Uh, basically, the president was uh, quite expansive on this, did a lot of talking about it, but again, his aides say that he knows not much more than what is going on and coming to him from the news media at this point. Uh, he has had no official reports. Uh, Gary, let me uh, break in here briefly. Yeah. Uh, I suppose that uh, the initial reaction that people might have is one of surprise that the president would indeed go ahead with the State of the Union message tonight. You indicated that he said that uh, government uh, must go forward. Would there be any precedent in your, in your knowledge for him uh, postponing it or delaying it for another time? Well, I, I don't know the, if there would be precedent in it. I, I, I suspect that it would be, although I can't go back in history that far to tell you if there has been a postponement of a, a State of the Union address. But uh, the, the, the mood here is now that, uh, yes, this is a tragedy and, uh, and it would be looked at and be investigated. But at this point, the staff, including White House uh, spokesman Larry Speaks, who told us earlier that the president will go on with his address, will probably make some mention of the uh, of the accident, uh, perhaps in, in detail as much as he knows, and perhaps bring the nation up to date on it. But it might all almost be a forum for him to do that, and it, in, 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 for that reason alone, he might give the State of the Union. Okay, Gary Shuster, you might be interested in hearing that the Soviet news agency TASS has issued a one-sentence report on the explosion. Uh, it was simply Dateline New York, and it said the U.S. Space Shuttle Challenger exploded shortly after takeoff. Uh, the Soviet Union is the only other nation that sent manned vehicles into space. It reported the deaths of four Soviet cosmonauts in the past, uh, but so far no further reaction from the Kremlin. And now Christopher Glenn uh, in the Cape uh, with a spokesman for NASA and more on the tragedy at the Cape today, the uh, explosion that destroyed the space shuttle Challenger moments after liftoff. Chris? Yes, Mitchell. Uh, NASA's George Diller is back with us once again. He has some um, new information about the kind of um, uh, rescue effort that's being mounted out there in the Atlantic, George. This uh, is, is a joint effort between uh, NASA and uh, the Department of Defense uh, uh, Management Office for Space Sh uh, Shuttle Support and also the Coast Guard. Uh, a number of uh, Coast Guard C-130s have flown from the Coast Guard Air Station at St. Petersburg, Florida, Another Coast Guard aircraft is coming up from Grand Bahama. Uh, they are now on the scene. One of the solid rocket booster retrieval ships that belongs to NASA was uh, uh, in that area at the time the mishap occurred. That one is there. Uh, a Coast Guard hydrofoil is now there. Uh, we also uh, have a Coast Guard cutter coming up from Grand Bahama Island. So uh, at this point, we're, we're moving to the area, but so far not much has been found. I thought I saw on the uh, NASA cameras out there in the aircraft at the uh, impact site uh, some chemical residue on the water. Is, was that correct, or, or have they spotted anything at all yet? They have spotted debris. Uh, we're not. We, we don't know if it's solid rocket booster debris or uh, or orbiter debris, and uh, we're still not giving up hope that the orbiter might be found uh, intact. You know, what condition the orbiter is in is going to depend on lo a lot of what the explosion was. Uh, Chris, could I break in and ask a question from New York? Uh, for those who have seen the pictures uh, on television of the explosion, there appeared to be one large piece of something that went off uh, by itself. And I suppose some people might think, was that the uh, shuttle itself or was that a fuel uh, a booster? Uh, we haven't looked at that uh, tape closely enough to be able to tell whether or not it was the external tank or one of the solid rocket boosters. Uh, the one thing that we did see uh, appeared to be uh, a forward piece of a solid rocket booster that contains parachutes that was uh, uh, floating down toward the water. But uh, exactly what it was that had a trajectory off to the right of the spacecraft is not real clear if that was the tank or one of the solid rocket boosters. Now, George, um, we've been saying since the, uh, the very uh, beginning of our, our coverage of this tragedy that uh, there was an explosion of some kind up there. Um, the way I understand it, however, a solid rocket booster doesn't, it can't explode. It's a, it's a steady burn, sort of, and uh, an explosion would seem to indicate that the external tank or the, some kind of a volatile liquid propellant was involved there. Not necessarily. 
Uh, in a solid rocket booster, when the composition of the solid propellant is poured, it must be poured in a very even fashion. And before uh, the segments are shipped to the Cape, the grain of the propellant is inspected to make sure that it is consistent. If it is not consistent, it will burn hot. It will develop hot spots while it burns. If you have a hot spot uh, that is significant, it can conceivably burn through the casing of the solid rocket booster and cause an explosion. So that will be looked at. Uh, we know this can happen because when we had a Delta flight uh, for the European Space Agency with the uh, 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 operational technology satellite that they were flying, uh, we had exactly that happen. There was a hot spot in the uh, in the uh, in the booster. It burned through the casing and caused the rest of the vehicle to explode. So we can't rule out that uh, that the solid is the culprit, but uh, we, we we don't know. We have we don't know how um, you know that the main engines may not also be involved. One more question from this end: uh, the uh, fact that this uh, vehicle was fueled up and uh, ready to go, and then had to be postponed. Is there any possibility or any view that uh, the kind of thing that goes into these delays could set up a situation that could uh, endanger the spacecraft. Well, uh, I guess all our procedures will be looked at. I, I guess the unknown here, there are two unknowns uh, that normally would not be suspect in this case, and that is the fact that this is the first flight uh, from Pad B for the space shuttle, and uh, also uh, this is the first time that we have attempted a launch in sub-freezing weather. Now, we have no indications that either is responsible. The ground support equipment, uh, you know, is not responsible for anything that happens in flight, but could it have contributed to a system malfunctioning in flight? So by impounding the data, which we have done, uh, it will be part of the evaluation as to whether or not any ground support equipment at Pad B might be suspect, whether or not uh, the cold weather procedures might be suspect or a procedure uh, that we would normally use in any event might be suspect. That will all be looked at in addition to what we gather from the, uh, from the flight systems data. Now, one other question from here, and that is that given the pressure of public opinion and the coverage and the expectation, uh, if it had to be done all over again, is it possible that uh, without this heavy schedule that NASA might have delayed this uh, liftoff until they had even better conditions and more established uh, conditions to go with? Well, I, I think uh, we need to keep in mind that we've frequently been criticized for being too conservative, that we weren't moving out of our research and development posture fast enough. And I think this indicates that all of these uh, uh, procedures that we had that had been very slow and deliberate in trying to ensure against what might even be considered an inconse inconsequential risk uh, may have been necessary. And uh, all we can do is, is to watch to see what may, uh, uh, may be the result. It, it may not be something that we would have had any control over or something totally unforeseeable. Okay, gentlemen, thank you. Uh, we're coming back to New York now. Uh, we have uh, overseas reaction to today's tragedy, and uh, we'll be bringing you that shortly. Uh, as we mentioned, the Soviet news agency TASS in a one-sentence report simply indicated that it had received word from New York that the space shuttle Challenger exploded moments after liftoff. It appears, and uh, we've just heard from the Cape, that there are no survivors, although, of course, there is a rescue operation uh, going on uh, as extensively as possible under the circumstances to see if anyone conceivably could have survived that disaster. And now we're going to see whether we can get further uh, background information on uh, what may have caused today's uh, tragedy. Paul Kelter is a NASA aerospace engineer. He happened to be in Las Vegas today where he was talking uh, to people about the space shuttle program and he was interviewed by CBS radio affiliate KNUU in Las Vegas and asked for his unofficial explanation. I have a pretty good idea based on seeing the launch go up what happened. Apparently, the external tank, which is uh, a very thin-skinned, 16-story high aluminum tank, which contains liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen fuel, uh, spontaneously exploded. And that's almost a million pounds of fuel. The solid rocket boosters, which contain solid fuel, apparently did not explode at that time. The orbiter, which contains the astronauts and experiments and so forth, uh, presumably exploded along with the, or as a result of the explosion of the external tank. When you 
before the launch this morning, there were some reports that uh, ice and, and icicles were hanging from the, uh, the Challenger. Uh, what kind of impact uh, do you think that may have had? If there were icicles hanging from the shuttle, then, uh, or, or just layers of ice on the shuttle at some point or any of the components of it, that could have changed the distribution of weight within the shuttle. But I don't know if that's actually, if there was actually any ice on board. Shifting the weight in the shuttle could, uh, I don't know if that could have caused such an accident. But certainly that uh, is a serious problem when ice is on board the shuttle. We, we can't launch the shuttle uh, really with a lot of ice or into a rainstorm. How will this tragedy affect the uh, space program? I would suspect that this tragedy would force manned mission, uh, the missions that we have with the shuttle, certainly to be put back by several months because now we need to investigate exactly why what happened happened. NASA aerospace engineer Paul Kelter. He was interviewed this morning in Las Vegas uh, by Luke Michaels of CBS radio affiliate KNUU. Now we're going to go overseas uh, to uh, get reaction from abroad to the tragedy at the Cape. Uh, Richard Roth is standing by in Rome, and uh, Richard, a city uh, that has uh, seen uh, such terrible tragedy in the recent airport massacre, uh, what's the impact there of this tragedy at the Cape? Mitchell, it was nightfall in Rome and across Europe when the explosion occurred. Radio and television here in Rome, uh, programs, normal programs were interrupted, and within an hour of the explosion, Italian television was broadcasting uh, pictures from the uh, uh, from the uh, scene of the launch site, from mission control, and from in the air where the where the ship exploded. All the adjectives were used that we've heard before. All of them inadequate, incredible, unbelievable, and tragic. The lieutenant Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Andrea Lorenzoni, who was one of three candidates for the Italian-American tethered satellite shuttle plan for 1988, was interviewed. He said that the explosion was incredible also from the technical point of view because he said that the security systems of NASA are so very high. He also said he was very sad from a human point of view because he had worked with Judith Resnick in Houston during his training there. Europe, uh, as you know, has a fascination with America, and a good part of that fascination is with American technology, a technology that many people in Europe have always said can accomplish the impossible. And tonight, I'm sure many here are are wondering about that. Richard, thank you. Uh, we'll be talking with you uh, later on. I just wanted to ask you one more question before you get off the line. I did mention the airport massacre, and someone here remarked that how ironic life was that uh, so many people die in so many tragedies and aircraft accidents, and of course this happens at uh, Cape Canaveral, and the eyes of the world are focused on it in, in astounded shock and horror, and I'm sure that uh, perhaps from our side of the Atlantic, we didn't uh, fully comprehend the shock and horror that all of you felt at the tragedy in Rome recently. All of these tragedies shock all of us. Richard Roth in Rome. Uh, Ronnie Hess is in Paris, uh, and I wonder if we can talk with her now. Ronnie, uh, uh, the reaction in the French capital. Well, I think that most people are stunned and shocked. There have been special reports on radio and television. There has been a great deal of reaction. The Minister of Research and Technology using the same kinds of words that perhaps are being heard in the United States. This is a black day for all of us, not just the Americans, but everyone. And uh, he has said, we think of all of our American friends and their families, not just the astronauts, but all of NASA's technical staff. He is sure that America will come back. He does not think this will hold back the U.S. space program. And frankly, he said it's a miracle that there have not been worse accidents considering the number of manned space flights. Ronnie Hess in Paris. The French uh, space program, of course, has uh, been in a European consortium, and I know that there have been...
program. It may have an effect on the schedule of satellite launches. However, as far as Hermès is concerned, there is the possibility that this accident will teach the French and the Europeans much in terms of making sure that safety measures are all safety measures, or as many as possible, are taken into consideration when the French get further along and when the Europeans go further along in manned space flight. Thank you, Ronnie Hess, in, in Paris. We've heard from two European capitals now uh, the reaction to the disaster at Cape Canaveral today. In case you have just joined us, this is continuing CBS radio network coverage of the disaster that destroyed the space shuttle Challenger moments after liftoff today, and apparently all seven crew members, including school teacher Krista McAuliffe and uh, the rest of that crew, uh, Francis Scobie, the commander, uh, Michael Smith, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, and uh, the uh, space teacher along with Judith Resnick. All were aboard that craft, and uh, the outlook uh, for the rescue is very bleak. Uh, for those who may have seen television pictures of the the explosion, uh, the possibilities of uh, picturing anyone escaping uh, from that Holocaust uh, were extremely dim. Uh, David Martin is standing by at the Pentagon. Uh, he has an update on what's going on in the center of the defense establishment, uh, the Pentagon being involved to some degree in the hopes and the future of the space program. David Martin. The recovery operation is being run by the Coast Guard, which had two uh, cutters in the area at the time. There were no U.S. Navy ships in the immediate area. You have the two Coast Guard cutters, a third cutter that is uh, close to the area, all three of them converging on the, uh, the site of where this uh, debris has rained down. There is a report, and we cannot confirm it uh, from here yet, that uh, the actual recovery operation was delayed somewhat uh, to stay out of the area while all this debris rained down. Uh, there are two Navy ships en route to the area. One's about 45 minutes away. The other is about two hours away. Uh, they, I don't think, will be any use in the immediate search for any possible survivors, but I think there will be a, a wide uh, search of the area trying to recover all possible debris in an attempt to figure out what happened here. Of course, we mentioned earlier the possible Pentagon involvement in the future of the space program, and uh, David, how might that be affected by this tragedy? Although the, the Air Force was going to become one of the prime users of the space shuttle because they were going to use it originally as the sole means for putting all U.S. military satellites into space. But because of so many difficulties that had occurred on earlier flights, the, uh, the Air Force had insisted on retaining the capability to launch some high-priority satellites with its own rockets. Uh, now, of course, that we have lost, apparently, one entire shuttle, which, if you think about it for a moment, is the equivalent of the Air Force in, in one brief moment losing a quarter of all its airplanes. It's, it's a, a major catastrophe, just uh, not only in terms of the lives involved here, but in terms of the equipment. And now that that is lost, it is going to uh, throw this, this program of cooperation between the military and the civilian NASA agency into uh, great disarray, I would think. An interview with correspondent David Martin. We recorded that a few moments ago at the Pentagon. Uh, President Reagan uh, is at the White House. Uh, he had been preparing for the State of the Union address this evening, and uh, there was a considerable schedule for the day of preparation and exposure to the press, and he had been planning and indeed did meet with a group of network correspondents uh, to give them a preview of the address, which was to have been shorter and more visionary than previous addresses. This was his fifth. And at the meeting, at the meeting, the president told uh, uh, the reporters that it was a very traumatic experience this morning, but the program would go forward. And now, astronaut Glenn, John Glenn, the first man on the moon, but, uh, is in the, Washington at a news the conference. people that were on the flight today carried our hopes and dreams along with them, and they'll live forever in our memories. And I guess that's the best tribute we can give to them. The... Uh, our prayers, our sympathy, our condolences go out to their families and friends. And uh, I guess that's about all we can say about them right at this time. It's been an amazing success story up to this very tragic accident today. I think this was about the 56th or 57th manned mission where we're dealing with new complexities and speeds and, and powers that man has never used before. And uh, 
We had hoped to push this day back forever, but that was not to be, and we all, I guess, intuitively knew that. So it's a day we don't want to repeat, that's for sure. Senator, what effect does this have on a space program or any sort of flight test program when something like this happens? This is Ohio Senator John Glenn, oh, the first man things, in space. Of course, because uh, there will be a very complete investigation. Our view of what happened uh, this morning would be only speculation at this point, although the very slow motion pictures I saw on one of the channels a little while ago seemed to show the first light coming out of uh, one of the solid rocket cases. Uh, whether that'll turn out to be the cause of the difficulty or not, I don't know. But I wouldn't think that this was, uh, you know, what it'll do to the program or how much it'll be set back will be dependent on the investigation. Was NASA trying to push too hard on this center? No, I don't think so. If there's one thing NASA has not done all the way through, uh, it is uh, take a chance on cutting corners. Uh, and we've grown accustomed to success. And it's been an amazingly successful program so far. You know, I remember one of the TV commentators, I won't say which network, but one morning talking about when there was a delay commenting, when are we going to get this, this tur turn this turkey into an eagle? Well, we've become so accustomed to getting these things off on time that safety was obviously being, uh, at least in that commentator's mind, uh, was being given uh, short shrift. Why aren't we running these things like a uh, regular airline schedule? Well, the fact that NASA has not done that. They run it with the idea of safety first and foremost, and that's been the way it's been operated ever since the days when I was in that program many years ago. It's a tribute to them that they have not been goaded under pressure to taking any chances. And we'll just have to wait the, the accident analysis to see what happened in this case. Senator, were you watching the We're listening to Ohio Senator John Glenn, the first man in space in the Mercury and, uh, program. One of my, uh, Staff people uh, brought a note in to me about this, and then I left immediately and went up to my office. What was your reaction, particularly to the replays you've probably seen? Oh, well, my reaction was a profound sense of loss, I guess, that this day had finally come that we'd hoped would never arrive. In some ways, I guess it's... Uh, you know, in, in our human existence, I, let me be philosophical for a moment. I guess in our human existence there is triumph and there is tragedy. And uh, man tries many things. And uh, we advance as a whole human race because we, because we succeed most of the time. We make advances, whether it's in space or engineering or health or medical things. Sometimes, though, we aren't perfect. And then there's a tragedy that uh, brings us back to our own human frailties and our, our lack of perfection. And so that's the kind of a day we're faced with now. It's been an amazingly succe successful series of triumphs through the years. But it also is fraught with the possibility of tragedy, and that's what we came up against today. Ohio Senator John Glenn, who was the first man to fly in orbit around the Earth in the uh, Mercury program, he himself had a close call when a rocket package broke loose and uh, it appeared it might not work. Without it, he would have been trapped in orbit, but uh, of course he succeeded and came back to be the hero of space. Oregon Senator Bob Packwood today, when told the news, said every so often in the history of the world, great people give their lives to help the rest of us. That's what those in space shuttle have done today. We're all in their debt forever. Chris Glenn is at the Cape. There is a rescue operation still in progress. And Chris, is there anything new on that? Uh, not on the rescue operation itself. As a matter of fact, when we were speaking with um, George Diller a few minutes ago of NASA, um, he said it's, it's so agonizing waiting for reports to come back from that impact area and that they have uh, seen very little. They've seen some pieces of debris in the water, but they can't really tell what part of the uh, rocket assembly or the orbiter uh, that was. Now, there have been some slow motion um, reruns of the, of the uh, camera view of the explosion and uh, 
Uh, apparently, the the huge uh, external fuel tank, the main source of propellant and thrust that pushes the shuttle into orbit and then falls away into the Atlantic and is spent. When it's spent, uh, that ruptured uh, nearly 50,000 gallons of volatile fuel aboard, uh, and uh, it looked very much like it just tore Challenger into into very, very many pieces. Chris, can I break in for a moment? We've had word from Washington now that uh, President Reagan's State of the Union speech, which had been scheduled for tonight, has been canceled. The announcement was made by House Republican Leader Robert Michael. A few moments ago, we uh, talked with Gary Schuster, who said the President had planned to go ahead with it. He felt the business of government would go forward, and of course he would uh, refer to it in his speech. But now, apparently, upon consultation with members of the Congress, uh, who are very much involved in this event, the the State of the Union uh, message for this evening has been canceled. Uh, House Speaker, House Republican Leader, rather, Robert Michael, made that announcement a few moments ago. President Reagan, a moment ago, was asked by a group of network correspondents uh, about the shuttle program. He told them, I'm sure there will be no more flights until the cause of the explosion is determined and any problems are solved. And, uh, Chris, let's go back and uh, uh, pick up where we left off uh, for a moment uh, before we uh, go to uh, Europe. We'll talk in a moment uh, with Dan Revive, who uh, is in uh, Bonn talking to the European Space Agency, but I didn't want to cut you off. Uh, I know you had some more information. No, I understand, Mitchell, of course. Uh, but I was saying the, the slow-motion reruns of the uh, explosion of the shuttle Challenger uh, showed that the, uh, the, the big external fuel tank did rupture, and, and when it did so, uh, it, it just tore the much smaller orbiter into a lot of pieces, and, and NASA has said uh, since that fine pieces of the debris continued to fall into the impact area out in the Atlantic for about four 45 minutes uh, after it happened. Um we uh, had mentioned that uh, George Diller of NASA was here, and he was describing to us um, after he left our air here a few minutes ago what, what happens now, and he said that um, they intend to treat it just like an, an airplane crash investigation. They will try to recover as much of the debris as they can, both from the surface and from the bottom of the sea. They will bring everything back here uh, to the Cape, or at least in the area. They will uh, have a special hangar, and they will lay all this debris out, and then from inspection of the debris and piecing together the telemetry and the other data that they gathered uh, uh, while the flight was in progress. They'll, they'll try to figure out just exactly what did happen. Uh, we have with us now a, a longtime colleague, Spencer Allen, who is uh, 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 in the area locally and has covered uh, space uh, activities for CBS News for many, many years. And Spencer, you've been um, talking with a youngster from New Hampshire. Yes, uh, it was a Brian Ballard, a 16-year-old senior senior from Concord High School, and he's also editor of the uh, Crimson, the school uh, newspaper. He was still in shock when I talked to him. He had difficulty in expressing himself, but I asked him if he planned to file any stories for his newspaper today. What kind of stories have you filed today? Uh, well, actually, uh, I was planning on writing uh, a few, uh, several big stories on the entire event. The paper is... Uh, only come, doesn't come out every day. It's only a um, quarterly paper. So I was planning on writing a final article, big article, and I wasn't really expecting this to happen, so I'm going to have to change my entire uh, scope, my entire view of things as you know, what happened here. When's the last time you saw Christian McCullough? Last time I saw her was, um, it's been a while. I saw her last October at a at a uh, teacher's conference. So uh, it's been a while since I've seen her in person. Gentlemen, uh, this is Mitchell Krause in New York. I'm sorry to break in again. I wanted to repeat for those who might be concerned about the uh, schedule for this evening that the White House has now canceled the President Reagan's State of the Union address, which had been scheduled for 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, there's no word on when it will be rescheduled. The announcement was made by the House of Representatives, by Robert Michael, the majority leader. Uh, another bit of information, uh, the irony of this day, uh, uh, Monday, just yesterday, was the 19th anniversary of the death of the Air Force Lieutenant Virgil Grissom, uh, Edward Higgins White, and Roger Chaffee. Uh, they were on the Apollo 1 capsule when it exploded uh, uh, on the launch pad. Uh, we have uh, a man who has followed the space program with us over the years in Bonn, West Germany, and he is talking with European Space Agency officials in the West German capital, Dan Revive. I wonder, Dan, if you could tell us what reaction we've had over there. Well, Mitch, they're, they're a little bit hesitant to give the kind of reaction that, well, you'd 
fear to hear, to be quite frank. The European Space Agency, with its control center at Darmstadt, West Germany, uses a rocket called the Ariane. It's a joint project of the Western European countries. And uh, they use it, uh, launching it from uh, South America, and it's been successful. It has launched uh, several satellites in space, and they've always underlined the fact that it is unmanned and therefore safe safer than the shuttle, as well as being more efficient in the past. That's a point they're not pushing tonight. The officials we were able to reach uh, did not want to make any lengthy comment beside describing their shock and, of course, condolences. Put your Dan Rabib on hold. We're going to Washington for White House spokesman Larry Speaks. L. The president, in consultation with the leadership of Congress, has decided to postpone the State of the Union address that was scheduled for this evening. He will address the Congress and the American people on next Tuesday. The President, in addition, has asked the Vice President to go immediately to Cape Canaveral's Kennedy Space Center, along with the acting NASA Director, Bill Graham. The Vice President will carry with him the President's personal concern for those courageous Americans who were aboard the Space Shuttle. In addition, the President will speak to the American people from the Oval Office later this evening regarding this tragedy. The President, since learning of the tragedy shortly before noon, has conferred with Don Regan, who in turn consulted with Speaker Tip O'Neill and Senate Majority Leader Bob Dole. They concurred in the President's decision to delay his State of the Union. A few moments ago, the President met in the Oval Office with NASA Director Graham and instructed him to fly to the Cape with the Vice President uh, to begin an effort to find out the cause of this tragedy. And then the President said to go forward with the nation's space program. The President said, and I quote, these people were dedicated to the exploration of space. We could do no more to honor them, these courageous Americans than to go forward with the program. Can you tell us some of the reasoning and the decision to postpone, since, as you know, the President's first reaction was to go ahead with tonight's speech? This is White House spokesman Larry President, Speaks. President, like all Americans, has seen this tragedy unfold on television and has felt keenly uh, what those family members must have felt watching that shuttle go into the air at, uh, at the Cape, first Pride and then second Hara. Um, the president feels that these same emotions are being experienced by people all over this nation at this moment. Uh, and with the con consultation of Congress that's taken place in the last hour or so, the president thought it was entirely appropriate that uh, his State of the Union uh, be deferred um, until uh, uh, and let him address the American people on what's happening Sir, here. Did Senator Graham tell him finally what happened? Does he have information, confirmation? No. The um, the uh, NASA has issued a statement indicating simply that there was an explosion aboard the space shuttle shortly after it lifted off uh, from the Cape this morning, and that a search and rescue mission is underway. Uh, that is continuing at this hour and will un will continue uh, until uh, all efforts to uh, uh, to find out uh, what the situation in there are exhausted. Does the president believe? Right. Oh, right. Larry, is the president also going to cancel his State of the Union activities for the balance of the weekend? What time is the uh, of the march? Uh, the the president will um, this uh, will for the balance of the week continue on his. Uh, previously announced schedule with the exception of those activities which were designed as a follow-up to the State of the Union. They will be rescheduled for next week. The time of the address uh, to the nation has not been determined uh, pending definite word from NASA about the situation. HHS, Treasury, and White House spokesman Larry Speaks announcing to the nation and to the Washington White House press corps that the State of the Union message by President Reagan originally scheduled for tonight at 9 has now been canceled. It's been postponed and 
until next Tuesday night. However, Mr. Reagan will address the nation from the Oval Office. The time of that uh, statement has not yet been determined, according to Mr. Speaks. Earlier, the president said he would go ahead with that speech. All of this, uh, the result of the tragedy today at Cape Canaveral. The space shuttle Challenger exploding into a gigantic fireball moments after it had lifted off from the uh, launch pad, apparently killing all seven of the crew members aboard, including uh, uh, two women, Judith Resnick, and the first teacher in space, Krista McAuliffe. This has been CBS News special coverage of this tragedy. We'll continue throughout the day with more information from Christopher Glenn at Cape Canaveral and our CBS News correspondents around the world, bringing you the latest in reaction and the recovery effort. I'm Mitchell Krause, CBS News. New York.